our boys, uh, they've grown up, you know, with cattle and doing hay and all those sorts of things that you do with pasture and, and, and cattle management. And uh, that's been fun to watch them uh, grow into real cowboys. We do a lot of intensive rotational grazing with cattle. And so to see the, the grasses change over time and how, how the landscape changes with doing that type grazing, pretty exciting. As I learned more about it, I got involved and was able to uh, get some assistance through NRCS for cross fencing. Uh, heavy use areas, water, water tanks, and water systems. And that has actually been what's helped us really put the rotational grazing plan in place because without good access to water and without the ability to, you know, cross fence pastures easily, that's really hard to make the rotational thing work. That species diversity with the grasses you know, that not only is good for the, the livestock, but also for the wildlife as well, because it, it's more of what you would see in a native type situation. Feeling of being at home and seeing the cows in the front yard, uh, the cows behind the house and the quail call, and that's got to be my favorite place. I guess as I get older, I think more about uh, conservation and being able to pass something better to the next generation. From a very young age, I really valued the uh, opportunities and uh, you know the locations that I could go to and hunt successfully. Yeah, I wish I could find a spot close by that had some timber like this and we could get and try to preserve. There's fewer and fewer tracks like this still around. Most of all that timber's been cut. Thankfully we've got a couple different tracks where we have some good hardwood, bottomland hardwood timber. The water's about to cut off a little island right there. As we've been able to acquire more property, we, we are placing more and more emphasis on how do we do better with conservation practices, whether it's on the cattle side of things, the row crop, or our pollinator planting that we have, we're always looking for ways to improve the soil, improve uh, species diversity, and also be able to improve the, the habitat for all the wildlife that we have here. Yes, a lot of those misconceptions upon uh, wildlife and agriculture not being able to coincide together goes along with just a lack of information. So it's a really neat experience to be able to see what kind of land people have, how they relate to their properties, and how they prefer to manage their properties. So this is benefiting the quail by, for one, it's providing a source of insects to come and pollinate the wildflowers. It's also producing a source of seeds for uh, winter forage. But one of the big things is if we put our hands on the ground, it's actually gonna be cooler on the ground than it is up above because all these forbs and bunch grasses are creating shade above the, the soil, but it's still allowing for bare soil so that way the quail and turkey bolts can run around through there without having any, uh, any issues. And also having the bunch type grasses where they nest, right? Right, so they'll get right up in the bottom of those bunches mm -hmm. and it creates cover it's like if we were to set one right here, it creates cover from above mm -hmm. and from pretty well all angles around, except for one primary good escape. But it's not so much cover that they can't come straight up out or go to the back or left or right if they need to as well. So some of the uh, conservation practices that we've gotten to use here, uh, the number one tool has been prescribed fire. Uh, we've been able to utilize it on the plantings. We've been able to utilize it on the row crop 
field to be able to clear them off to get ready for planting or spreading litter. We've been able to use them in a timber to reduce uh, competition and to reduce fuel loads. So that has been one of our largest tools conservation-wise on the property. One of the main things we talk about is potentially incorporating native grazing, whether that's on the pollen air plantings we have now, or being able to actually establish a true native warm season grass planting for a area to be able to rotate his cattle through. Not only is that going to produce another source of biomass, but it's also a very drought tolerant species and drought tolerant mix. So that way, when we do run into those long summer months, when we may go two months without any moisture other than dew, we still have growing healthy green forage for those cattle. You know, I always say private landowners are the most important conservation partner that we have. In Arkansas in particular, almost 90% of all lands is privately owned. And when we're looking at species like bobwhite quail, um, whose population is declining range-wide, um, and, and that range covers a state like Arkansas, it's critical that we work on private lands and form those relationships with private landowners. It's incredibly important that we recognize our, you know, agricultural producers in Arkansas who are doing good work. And uh, thanks to John Deere, we've been able to recognize an outstanding family in Southern Arkansas um, who are putting great wildlife habitat on the ground on working landscapes. Jason Cater and his family are deserving of the Quo Forever Farmer of the Year Award because of everything they've done uh, not only for the habitat, but for the community and for our local chapter even. John Deere has partnered with Quell Forever to recognize the Farmer of the Year because we share common goals, common goals around conservation and environmental sustainability. Jason is deserving of the Quell Forever Farmer of the Year Award because he does everything he possibly can for the wildlife while maintaining a working landscape. because when I was growing up, we had a really abundant population of bobwhite quail here in Southeast Arkansas. But by the time I was 12, 13 years old, those numbers had reduced dramatically. And so for probably almost 30 years, we never heard of quail anywhere on any of our properties in this area. So it was really important to me to be able to bring back those populations hopefully one day have a sustainable enough population that we could do some hunting and, and hopefully pass that on down to the next generations. Probably three years ago, I was out checking cows early one morning and I heard a quail and I really thought uh, my mind was playing tricks on me. And so I stopped and I listened uh, for a little while and I heard it again. And I got really excited at that point because it had been like I say, close to 30 years since we had heard or seen any quail anywhere in our area. The perfect quail habitat would look like open woodlands, savannas, returning our prairies um, into uh, native diverse habitats, putting prescribed fire back on the ground. Any kind of habitat that has native wildflowers that produce insects, uh, insects are primarily what chicks, uh, quail chicks and turkey poults need to eat uh, to make it to that adult stage in their life. And I think pollinators are an underrepresented uh, and highly important component of what we're doing here in Arkansas. We have 600 native bee species in Arkansas, all that rely on native wildflowers for pollination. And also the monarch butterfly. We include milkweed in, in all of our seed mixes, primarily for the monarch butterfly to help that migrating population? Well, I think uh, probably one of the top best reasons for being in agriculture is that it's a good way to raise a family. From a very young age, uh, I was uh, very involved with hunting and uh, both of our sons have killed their first turkey uh, there on the crop farm uh, where we have the, the pollinator plantings. 
that I've taken them hunting ever since they were very small and they have a real love for the outdoors and hunting. And the boys are all on board, it seems, uh, that we continue to do better at what we do with the land and the farm and, and the direction that we're headed. And I'm excited for the future of the farm because of their attitude that they have developed about conservation and about um, the farm in, in particular. Oh yeah, it's, it's really exciting because uh, I think back to the generations before me, you know, and um, to be able to have them interested in it, want to be a part of it to kind of carry on some of that, uh, that's, uh, that is very rewarding.